everyone. Thanks for joining. I look forward to sharing with you some research and recommendations for canola storage. Uh, my name is Charlie Springer. I'm a project leader and engineer at PAMI. Um, over the years, we've completed many research projects really aimed at helping to develop and refine best management practices for storage and drying of all commodities. I'm going to review the general storage recommendations for canola uh, and weave in a refresher of the principles of grain storage management. I'll provide directions to where to find other resources as we go along. Um, and to round out things today, I'm going to highlight some of the research we've done specific to storage of canola in large bins um, and what the major hurdles are in these scenarios. So the big concern during grain storage is that it might spoil and spoilage of course means lost revenue. Uh, grain has a higher chance of spoiling when it's hot or moist um, as insects, molds and mites thrive in these warm and wet conditions. Um, therefore, it's really key that both temperature and moisture be monitored and controlled to prevent spoilage. Um, and the larger the volume of stored grain, the higher the risk. Here we see the safe storage conditions chart from the Canadian Grain Commission for canola. As I mentioned, safe, safe storage depends on both temperature on the horizontal and moisture on the vertical axis. Uh, we want to stay in the green zone here, uh, but keep in mind no spoilage as they have written, really should be more minimize the risk of spoilage specifically for canola. Um, and the long-term storage of canola should be around 8% um, moisture and temperature less than 15 Celsius. Um, of course, charts like the, these really need to be used with caution and more of a guideline uh, since any if we have hot spots or pockets of high moisture, um, these can become irrelevant even if the rest of the grain is okay. Um, and microbial activity that can occur in these spots is really difficult to predict. Um, here's some other spoilage risks to keep in mind. Um, so chaff, weed seeds, and insects, part of dockage, um, can have higher moisture levels than the canola seed um, er, that they're in, and concentrated areas of the stockage in a bin can develop mold growth and spoilage. Uh, canola with higher oil content also should be stored at lower moistures to prevent spoilage over long durations. Um, and the chlorophyll and green canola will increase storage risk even if the bin grain is cool um, and dry as it'll respire for several weeks after harvest. Uh, canola with high green seed content should be monitored closely after harvest in case you need to turn your fans back on. So we can control temperature and moisture in a bin by blowing air through the grain. Um, blowing air through the grain at low airflow rates will help even out the temperature variations and keep the grain cool, and we call this aeration. Um, if we need to control both moisture and temperature, we can use higher airflow rates to remove moisture from the grain uh, when the ambient air has a capacity to dry, um, but it shall explain further in a few slides. Uh, the major difference we can see between the two methods here is airflow rate. Um, so ensuring that we have enough airflow depends on the resistance to airflow from the grain that our fans need to overcome. And here we have um, what impacts resistance to airflow. So the first is grain type, um, such that smaller seeds will pack tighter and have smaller voids for air to pass through, um, thus increasing the resistance. Uh, canola, of course, is one of the worst cases for this, such as such a tiny seed. Um, increasing the depth of grain will also exponentially increase the amount of static pressure or resistance um, that we need to overcome. And the taller the bin, the, the harder it is to achieve higher airflow rates because of this. Um, Thirdly, uh, the faster we try and get a fan to push air through the grain, uh, the more back pressure there will be. So getting those higher airflow rates for natural air drying um, is more difficult, more pressure to overcome. Um, and lastly, the type of ducting system um, or distribution will contribute a small amount of added resistance that needs to be overcome. 
Uh, charts like these that I have shown here for canola are available e for each commodity and show the relationship between the grain depth, airflow, and res air airflow rate and airflow resistance. Um, and then consider distribution as a little bit on top of that. Since airflow, um, we need to know the airflow resistance, we can measure this um, by measuring the static pressure at the outlet of the fan using some type of a gauge or digital manometer um, specific for this purpose. Uh, we can then use this measurement of airflow resistance um, and those charts and fan curves that are supplied by the manufacturer uh, to determine what airflow rate we're actually achieving in the bin. Um, alternatively, the University of Minnesota has a really neat tool uh, for helping to size fans based on your bin configuration and type of grain being stored. Uh, now that we know whether we have enough airflow, I mentioned that we can use natural air drying uh, to control moisture, but that it depends on the ambient conditions. So air's capacity to dry depends on how much water it can hold based on temperature and how much it's currently holding, which is the relative humidity. So this water glass analogy here is often used to demonstrate this. Consider a large glass to represent warm air, and when it's at 60% humidity, there's still a fairly large volume of headspace to take up additional water. But if we were to take that same air and cool it, um, which we now have a, a small cup, then, and the relative humidity stays at that 60%, we now see that the volume of empty air is much smaller and less water holding capacity. Um, so based on this, warmer air will have a greater capacity to remove moisture from the grain for a given humidity. But how do we know exactly when this situation um, means the air has a capacity to dry? So we can reference these EMC charts that have been developed to determine when air has the capacity to dry. Equilibrium moisture content is a function of air temperature, air humidity, and grain type. And the EMC is the steady state grain moisture that when exposed to constant ambient air conditions, it will achieve. So these are uh, commodity specific charts. And this one here is for canola. And this chart shows you the um, EMC for canola at a variety of temperatures and humidities. For example, in this uh, one I've highlighted here, if you run air at 60% RH and 10 degrees Celsius through the grain for a long length of time, uh, the canola will eventually equilibrate to 8.9% moisture content. Um, since canola is considered dry for long-term storage at less than 8%, um, temperatures and RH conditions showing an EMC in this range will achieve drying over time. So I've got those highlighted here in the chart in red. Um, note that moisture transfer between air and grain is very slow at temperatures less than 10 degrees Celsius. So even though the EMC is less than 8% at some of these lower temperature ranges, um, there's really not much capacity to dry because of this slow moisture movement. And in those conditions, sometimes the ambient air condition, ambient conditions just aren't favorable for natural air drying. Um, but we can add heat to an in-bin system uh, to improve this capacity to dry. Um, the rule of thumb that we have in, in these scenarios is that for about 10 degrees increase in temperature, uh, the RH is cut in half, so really improves the ability to dry. Um, the heat can be added in different ways, um, and you can reference a frequently asked questions page that I've got linked here on PAMI's website for how to do this, how to size the heater, um, and some key guidelines that I've got um, summarized here. Uh, we only want to use a CSA certified heater, don't want to have a risk of igniting the grain on fire, and be sure to follow the instructions for use. Um, ensure adequate airflow rate. We want at least one CFM per bushel when we're natural air drying with heat, um, and limit the temperature increase to about 10 degrees Celsius so we don't risk um, overheating the canola and risking quality.
Um, the temperature is really what removes the moisture from the kernel, and the airflow does airflow rate is what removes the moisture from the bin. So we want to make sure these are balanced, not add too much um, heat without increasing um, the airflow rate as well. Uh, we want to ensure that we have adequate ventilation in the headspace so that the moist air is removed from the bin to reduce the chance of it condensing on the roof um, and dripping back down into the down the walls into the grain. Uh, we want to make sure that we cool the grain down to 15 Celsius after drying, and most of all, monitor the grain temperature and moisture content so you know when the grain is dry um, and to minimize the risk of overheating. So that was a review of the general storage guidelines and management methods, uh, but what challenges are faced as we move towards using larger bins? Um, a lot of the grain storage management tools we have were developed uh, prior to the 2000s, when the average bin sizes were around two to 4,000 bushels and depths were only around 10 to 20 feet. Um, but common bin sizes now are closer to 20 to 50,000 bushels and grain depths are more like 20 to 40 feet. Um, so if we extend the airflow resistance charts, um, this exponential relationship shows that much higher pressures um, are needed to overcome if we want to condition grain in these bins. Um, aeration rates are likely still achievable um, if only cooling is needed, shown by the, the blue line on the chart, um, but natural air drying rates um, need to overcome a lot. So here's an example of a trial we did at our PAMI site in large bins. Uh, we filled our 25,000 bushel bins with canola and measured resistance um, at the fan after each load. Um, however, the 10 horsepower fan stalled out at only 17,000 bushels, or about 22 feet, when the static pressure um, reached 7 inches. Um, so for the full bin at 32 feet, we could expect, looking at our charts, up to 20 inches of pressure, which this fan would not have been able to supply. Um, and since grain depth is also a major factor in large bins, another thing to consider is how um, the bin fills and how uniform that is. So grain naturally piles into a cone, which means less static pressure and greater airflow at the outside of the bin due to lower depths. Um, and fines tend to concentrate in the core um, and then the greater depths here in the center could increase the risk of spoilage due to re uh, reduced airflow in this area. Uh, one consideration is the use of grain spreaders uh, to minimize the cone and evenly distribute the fines, uh, which might help to make the airflow variation um, and this the temperature and moisture profile more even. So what did we find when we tested this option? Um, we actually found that the gravity spreader did create a more level surface for most of the filling, but it wasn't completely even as it got closer to the top. Um, and what about airflow? Um, we actually found that the spread grain um, had experienced higher static pressures when we measured it for the same uh, grain volume as the regular peaked um, fill, and which means we had an overall lower airflow rate through the whole bin. Um, so why might we have seen this? Um, we also measured uh, force of grain across the width of the bin to try and assess compaction, which might help explain the why airflow was higher in the um, spread bin. So the normally filled peak bin had a more even compaction profile um, we can see um, on the top um, than the spread fill um, seen on the bottom. And this compaction is likely the cause of the higher static pressure, even though the depth was more even. So the higher compaction means less voids um, and less space for the air to travel through. Uh, and when we simulated the different fill scenarios, we saw a consistent story being told. Um, and really it comes down to the different dynamics of tumbling and rolling of the grain as it is loaded into the bin will affect the properties of the grain um, as, it's, as it piles. So it turns out that the tumbling characteristics for the spread surface uh, were such that the grain at the bottom had a considerably lower voidage uh, 
or higher density than for the peaked filling. Um, and that the normal fill has a more even voidage profile. So likely having a more even um, voidage for air to pass through has more impact than the depth itself. Um, and now what about overcoming fan size limitations? Um, can we use multiple fans to do this since um, the uh, standard 10 horse fan isn't enough for canola? Um, so we tested using multiple fans, um, using two of those 10 horse fans mounted at 90 degrees on the same 25,000 bushel bins. Um, and we found that there wasn't an advantage at higher depths and the fans still stalled out. So uh, there's probably lots of opportunity to examine other fan and ducting configurations to find potential alternatives, but it shows it's not just as simple as adding a second fan anywhere on the bin um, and you'll get greater airflow. Uh, so really some key takeaways um, for larger bins based on what work we've done to date are that standard fans kind of around that 10 horsepower that are often sized um, for bins of this size work probably for, for something such as corn, which has lots of voidage, um, but it's not sufficient for providing airflow rates required for drying canola in um, these large bins greater than 20,000 bushels. Um, aeration rates for cooling are probably still achievable, but not for drying. Um, so larger fan installations um, will probably require utility upgrades to the three-phase electric power to operate, which can be a hurdle to overcome to provide enough horsepower and therefore airflow rate to achieve drying. Um, so alternatively, the recommendation uh, that we pr often provide is to condition canola, so dry it down in smaller bins where it's easier to achieve sufficient airflow with lower depths, um, and then place it in larger bins from long-term storage if that's necessary. Um, and then we saw spreading doesn't, uh, it does result in more even depths, uh, but there ends up being greater compaction, so there's no advantage to airflow resistance. Um, and lastly, adding multiple fans in parallel doesn't increase airflow rate um, and any alternative ducting systems and fan orientation still need more validation um, to see what's, what are some better scenarios. Um, most of all, make sure to use canola specific resources. A lot of these are all commodity specific, so make sure you're referencing the ones for canola. Um, of course, bigger bins means bigger risks, so make sure you have a management plan that's specific for your requirements. Um, there's lots of resources available, both from the Canola Council. This is an example of one of their storage um, documents. And we also have lots of tutorial sheets and frequently asked questions pages um, at PAMI.ca, which I've got here in our publication section. Uh, and that wraps it up. Uh, thanks for joining uh, the presentation. Uh, always feel free to reach out. Uh, by phone or email about any storage and drying questions. Um, enjoy the rest of the forum. Thanks.